Let's we'll start, Congressman Carmelo, with you. Senator Lindsey Graham said today that McConnell's post-trial comments could hurt Republicans in 2022 campaigns. How might that be the case, do you think? Well, Senator Graham and others who are defending the president uh, just proved what I told your colleagues uh, earlier this morning, Alicia, that the Republican Party remains a willing hostage of Donald Trump. However, Senator Graham is also correct that Senator McConnell's remarks yesterday do complicate things for Republicans. It is going to be difficult for a lot of Republicans to run in primaries mm -hmm. with those comments out there because McConnell has made it clear that Donald Trump uh, assaulted our democracy. Uh, he's made it clear that he doesn't believe that the future of the Republican Party should be related in any way to Donald Trump. So this is going to make for a messy primary season for Republicans. This is the beginning of a civil war. McConnell obviously doesn't want it to be an all-out war, which is probably why he uh, split and voted one way and then uh, uh, said uh, something uh, entirely uh, inconsistent with that vote in some ways afterwards, uh, because he thinks he can manage this separation between the Republican Party and Donald Trump. Uh, maybe he can do it. Uh, he's he's quite shrewd and, and able, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be messy. And I think Republican primaries in 2022 are uh, going to provide um, a, a lot of fodder uh, for, uh, for us as we watch and analyze and observe. Indeed, Natasha, roughly one minute before the vote last night, you had Trump releasing a statement that the MAGA movement had, quote, just begun and that he had a lot to share in the coming months. What are you hearing about his plans moving forward? Well, certainly, as we know from Lindsey Graham's comments today, um, and that is that he is ready to move forward. He's ready to um, get involved in 2022 primaries. And he is ready to seek retribution against anyone who voted against him. Um, he's talking big. Um, and there's also some realities, though, that you should keep in mind, which is there are some active investigations against Donald Trump. And he's been laying low. He's been laying low mm -hmm. for a reason. His states have told him to do so. Um, but, you know, he's facing something in Georgia. He is facing something in New York. Um, so I think it remains to be seen what we will really see from Trump. And as far as McConnell, um, just going back to that quickly, I mean, you know, the Republican Party is undergoing an identity crisis right now, and no one better personified that than, than Mitch McConnell um, saying what he said. Um, you know, he, he called Trump's actions unconscionable. Law, he, he said it inspired lawlessness and violence, and that he voted to acquit. Um, there's only, he would only go so far because he does his own political reality, which is that his members would would be forced to ha to call him to step down from leadership, and he would be facing that. Um, so he, he is trying to straddle um, what, what I think we're seeing within the Republican Party um, on a larger scale. Beth, Natasha referenced what Senator Lindsey Graham said. I want you to listen specifically to what he said today about Burr's vote to convict. The biggest winner, I think, of this whole impeachment trial is Laura Trump. My dear friend Richard Burr, who I like and, and have been friends to a long time, just made Laura Trump almost a certain nominee for the Senate seat in North Carolina to replace him if she runs. And I'll certainly be behind her because I think she represents the future of the Republican Party. So what is striking to me, Beth, about some of that is that as you have former Congressman Carbello talking about the forthcoming civil war within the GOP, you were talking about, you know, Republican candidates who could take different lanes, people who want to take the Trump off ramp. We're not just talking about candidates that are in his image or that are willing to sign up for Trumpism. We are talking about literal extensions of his family as being the most likely candidates. Do you think that is ultimately how this plays out? You know, I just had to laugh at what Senator Graham said because 
just because Laura Trump's name is Laura Trump doesn't mean that she automatically is going to be elected senator from North Carolina. Nobody knows anything about her. Nobody's ever heard of her. The simple name, the simple connection to Donald Trump does not somehow anoint these family members into uh, elected office. They need to run. They need to prove themselves. They need to, to, to show what they have. Nobody's ever heard of Laura Trump outside of seeing her perhaps in a family photo with the former president. I think the bigger issue uh, is, is, is really about how what Trump did in 2016 was significant for many reasons. And the biggest one in terms of looking at the future of the party is he vanquished everyone. And those other 15 candidates who ran in that primary, all those establishment figures like Jeb Bush, because he was speaking a different message. He was speaking a populist message. He was recognizing that the party had gotten too dependent sort of on its message to the donor class, that, that cutting taxes for the wealthy and slashing uh, programs for the disadvantaged is, is the way to go. Republican voters sh showed very clearly in their preference for Trump that the establishment message was not working for them anymore. And any successful Republican candidate going forward has to decouple perhaps from the personality of Trump and some of the sort of racially tinged rhetoric and violent rhetoric that he's inspired. But perhaps remember the message that did come through that did work, which is to make the party a little bit closer to the grassroots, a little more populist. I mean, Lindsay, I would also argue that that ended up being really a faux populism, and that is something that Republicans will have to grapple yeah. with. I do want you, though, to take a listen to what Evan McMullen said on our air earlier. What's clear to, to me and, and to the over 120 uh, Republican officials who, who joined us on uh, February 5th is that something new is required. 40 percent feel that there's no hope for the GOP to reform and, and to you know, rejoin the sort of the healthy political process in America. And so 40 percent thought that we should start a new party. Valencia, he said that this group of Republicans will look to primary Trump allies, Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar of Arizona. What would the addition of a third party mean for Democrats? You know, I, I think we have to be mindful of the movement that Donald Trump has inspired. It is a name that people are resonating with, that low income, that white voters who hadn't been engaged before, rural voters, they are seeing something in this. And so I would be careful to say that we can just move on and, and that this isn't much that we have to worry about, because we do actually have to worry about the disease that has infected the Republican Party and our country and allowed for Trumpism to actually become the rallying cry. We're having this conversation here, and there are Republicans in high positions who are talking about wanting um, a morally different Republican Party. But look what happened with the Lincoln Project. We found out it wasn't actually that effective in moving people away from Donald Trump. And so I would be cautious to believe that we're going to see something different in the next four years, or actually in the next two years, in the midterms, if something doesn't at the grassroots level change. And so Democrats have to ensure that we are actually getting work done. And so our base will show up for us again in local races as well as in the midterm. And then the Republican Party, they shouldn't just uh, figure out that, you know what, we're having this moral conversation. There's a very large part of their party that have been ignored and they believe in Trumpism and whether it's Donald Trump, his siblings or whoever that he supports, they are probably going to support them. And that's going to be very dangerous to our democracy. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.